We're going to move up to the start now for the second heat of the men's four. And in this semi-final AB of the men's four, in lane one, Great Britain, lane two, New Zealand, lane three, Australia, lane four, Romania, lane five, Switzerland, lane six, South Africa. I mean, this is the semi of death here, Martin. Semi of death, the Olympic champions, the world champions in this, the flying Kiwis with two world champion, uh, Olympic champions for the men's eight. The Romanians pretty much their silver medal Olympic for this British crew. No one's been able to touch them so far. Freddie Davison, Matt Aldridge, Dave Ambler, Ollie Wilkes up in the bows. The Kiwis, Matt McDonald and Tom Murray, the Olympians in the stroke seat, Logan Ulrich and Ollie McLean up in the bows. The man from Auckland and North Shore, former Cal Oarsman. Well, here they are, the Olympic champions. They've switched their order around. And uh, Alex Pennell up in the bows, Spencer Turin, Jack Hargreaves, and Alex Hill gone back into the stroke seat. Going to ask Sarah Cook in the race what she thinks of that move. Tiganescu, Semchuk, Barairu in the stroke seat, Florian Lahachi, not so big on the ergo, and they're out there in lane four. Big ass for the Romanians. Ian Wright, Swiss four, Joel Shurik, brother of Simon. The uh, gold medalist in Rio for the lightweight fours, Tim Roth, again, come back from America, Pat Brunner and Kai Schatzler. And this uh, amazing South African crew that qualified uh, through the rep, Henry Tor, Luke Dafarin, James Mitchell, Sandra Torrente, come back into the fold to stroke this four. They've got a big ass from lane six, haven't they? It is tough for those crews on this closest side of the course. We've seen that play out all morning, but the race will be probably on the far side. The British undoubtedly the crew to beat world champions. But this crew from New Zealand, super interesting watching them develop. We saw them for the first time on the world stage this year at the World Cup in Lucerne, where they picked up the bronze medal. They're going from strength to strength, two Olympic champions in that boat. Romania, so strong, both their men's and women's team, and Australia, the combination back finally uh, together at a world championship following Tokyo. And I just want to check, was Alex Pennell in stroke for the heats, and Hilly's gone back in the stroke for the stroke? Right, we're just keeping everyone guessing, Mark. <laughs> so, as we've pointed out, this Australian for their Olympic champions, all four back in the boat. We see them off the start here. Alex Hill in the stroke seat, Alex Pennell back in the bow seat, but we've seen them out training, sat in the opposite seats. They've been out doing bursts, they've been out trying to find a pace, trying to find a combination that works. Lots of conversations on the bank as well. So will the Australians be able to find a combination that works today? Wow, look at that start, Sarah. Yeah, look at the Romanians, 47 stroke per minute. They are leading the field by about a canvas. I think they're going to struggle with this pace as they come down to speed, and I think we'll see the, the boats on the far side. But a slow start here for the British. Well, you can see just how bumpy and difficult the conditions are, and it's going to be like that the whole way. The British women's four went out from that lane one, took a big lead and held it, as it is the British men's four, slightly slower off, and it's the Americans who we, we see, the, the New Zealanders, sorry, New Zealanders, who we see in lane two, who, uh, who've made the leading start. Alex Hill, they're such an aggressive man in the stroke seat. And when it works, it really does work. I'd never thought he was suited to the bow seat. He's not exactly the guy you want with smooth and set the boat up. But the South Australian back in the stroke seat. And now the Australians going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the British for that second and third place. As we ride here <laughs> with the Kiwis, that's Matt McDonald in the stroke seat, Tom Murray, Logan Ulrich, and Ollie Fitzroy McLean behind him. They are going to lead the field through the 500 metre mark. They're the dangerous, they're the dark horses uh, for this regatta in this event, I think. Picked up a bronze medal in Lucerne. The New Zealanders coached by Mike Roger. And uh, they're looking very ominous out there in front. Britain yet to make a move. I think they're just edging the Australians who are ahead of the Romanians. Australia still in a qualifying position. Yeah, Australia in that qualifying third position right now. They're getting rid of the Romanians, which is going to be good news for them. But the British have a kind of smoothness about them. They've got a calmness about them, as it is. The New Zealanders got that canvas boat lead, that boat deck early on. The British at the moment have held that, and I'm sure those two crews will be sitting over there saying, let's just get on with our work, let's make it comfortable as we take a look now at the Australians. Yeah, we saw the Aussies on screen there. Alex Hill, the South Australian, back in the stroke seat of that crew, but at the top 
of your picture. We can see the British just edging through. They're on 36 strokes per minute, looking pretty long, comfortable, super loose. I mean, those are tough conditions and they just look really long and relaxed uh, and pretty businesslike in what they're doing. The Kiwis, though, still with the race lead as they're coming up to the 900 metre mark. Well, the New Zealanders are a crew who are improving, aren't they? As you say, they were bronze in Lucerne, behind the British, behind the Australians. But they're the ones who are improving. They're the ones who've still got probably more, more improvement to make on their curve. The British have been at a pace and they've been fast all year. But this is great from the New Zealanders taking the British on. So if you're watching this down in New Zealand on Sky Sports, we hope you're enjoying this Kiwi 4. It's uh, half past nine at night and New Zealand are leading the all-conquering British. Australia in that qualifying position. Romania... Switzerland and South Africa aren't going to do it. The big question, are the British going to get through the Kiwis in this third quarter, Greg? Well, as you say, the uh, New Zealanders have held that position. Will the British be able to come through? I'm sure the Australians will be pleased to be well out of the wrestle for the other qualifying places. You can see it's Romania, it's Switzerland, South Africa well back now. And it's just whether the British are able to ease their way through in this third quarter. And it looks to me as though the British are now making a very considered move, 1,200 metres in, and they're almost every stroke taking distance on the Kiwis. I think we're going to see the British, it says they're two metres, one metre down. I think they're starting to move through now on 36 strokes per minute, looking pretty comfortable as they do it. They are absolutely sending the message there, the crew to beat as they now get the better of the crew from New Zealand. That's Matty Aldridge in the three seat. That man is so strong, putting the hammer down. He missed the World Championships last year due to COVID and the former coastal rower absolutely killing it in that three seat. There's Jack O'Brien red in the three seat of the um, Australians. Sorry, Jack Hargreaves, I said Jack O'Brien. Sorry, Sarah. But uh, he's anchoring that boat through to a third place position at the moment. Yeah, it's interesting to see, isn't it, the way this British four moves. There's such a smoothness. Freddie Davison in the stroke seat. He's completely unbeaten sitting in the stroke seat of this British four. There's a calmness about them. There's a smoothness about them. And even in these difficult headwind conditions, they've just been able to ease their way away. As we see the Australians there comfortably in that third qualifying place and a great big gap down to the fourth. Has it worked putting Alex Hill back in the strokes that you think? They've got the qualifying, but they're, they're a mile off these other two crews, Sarah. Yeah, certainly not the result that the Aussies would be wanting at this point, but it is only a semi-final. Three spots go through to the A final. They're in lane three, and we know that the course is difficult the further across we get, so perhaps the Aussies uh, just struggling with the more difficult water further across the course. But the British very clearly showing their dominance now. They've put away some 13 metres on the New Zealanders. The Australians well clear in third. Yeah, it's been a big last 500 metres or so, hasn't it, from the British there. I can only agree with you that today's about getting the job done, about doing what they need to. And the British have eased their way past that New Zealand fast starting for the Australians comfortably in that third position. And then uh, let's take a look at this position for fourth place. I think Romania getting the fourth place. Seven crews will qualify, so that got to win the B final. Romania doubling up in the men's eight. And uh, out in front, it is the British. Ollie Wilkes in the bow seat, just come into that crew. There he is on the left of your picture from last year when he got COVID. Dave Ambler subbed in the boat last year, took a gold medal. Matthew Aldridge missed it last year. Maybe gold will be his. Freddie Davison, the stroke man, eases his crew across the line. That's a decent margin. And uh, New Zealand grab a Paris qualifying slot. Improving crew, they led the British through the thousand. Australia, well, has the crew change work for them? Pennell, Turin, Hargreaves, and Hill grab the third qualifying slot. It is Romania, the Olympic silver medalists, who take fourth. They'll get a decent lane draw for the B final. Switzerland take fifth, and South Africa struggle in the conditions on this lane six in sixth place and a time check there the americans about a second quicker in the previous semi-finals so will be very interesting come the a final to see how those two crews stack up against each other but great turnaround here from the Kiwis, the Aussies getting the job done. We've been seeing the last couple of races finish one to six across the course. Uh, so places one to six in lanes one to six, which starts to give an indication that perhaps the conditions are playing a factor here. But uh, confirmation of that result there, Greg. 
Yeah, big performance from the New Zealanders that normally it's Great Britain and Australia who wrestle for the gold and silver medal in the men's Coxless Four.